Welcome back everyone! So today I would like to tell you a really great story. There are multiple videos about people who live in the zone. They are often called self-settlers. But this video will be pretty special, because this is our attempt to explain the phenomenon that we actually behold for more than a decade. For example, one person who we visit already for a very, very long period of time. Her name is Hanna Zavorotna from Kupovata village. This video will be pretty long, but it is intentional, because we want to give you a space for thinking and to give you some insider's details, so this way you will understand context and catch how it feels for us, for those who are in the everyday contact with Chernobyl for a very long time. What you see now is our journey we took on the New Year Eve of 2021. That was 31st of December, and we made it together with our closest friends. To get to Kupovate village, you need to take this very road by turning right in front of the Chervaj bridge. The road is notably large, because it was expanded after the Chernobyl disaster to connect town of Chernobyl and the Green Cape. It was a semi-permanent town for liquidators located straight outside of the zone. This town no longer exists, but the road is still a good example of a phenomenon that we can describe only as a time-space warp and is specific only to the Chernobyl zone. The thing is, in the zone you often can't get by the shortest way to the destination, but only in the way the zone will actually allow you. Ask everyone in Chernobyl and they will tell you that Kupovate is actually far, and for example the village of Ilinci is really far. However, if you look on the map, you will be surprised at how close, in fact, they are to populated places. But the barbed wire and uh, sprawling nature define the way and the perception. You get so used to this that in Chernobyl we called the lands outside as the Great Land, so those who live in the zone live like on a metaphorical island, the island of Chernobyl. As farther you get away from the town of Chernobyl, the populated capital of the zone, as less visible becomes the human presence. On our way, that was basically a forestry and a fire station in Opachichi, a village that unfortunately no longer has any residents. Behind Opachichi, we take this side way and enter the Kupovata village. Once it was pretty famous for its dairy farm and high achievements in cultivation of corn and cabbage, and it had more than a half a thousand of residents. After the Chernobyl disaster, it remained alive for a week, and then it was evacuated. A year after, the first people started to come back. Now there is around nine of them here. A crucial thing to understand. For centuries, these lands didn't give an opportunity for the easy life. They were forcing a strong emotional and mental connections to them for those who lived here. Because around the swampy lands, low fertile soils, impassable forests, and this is an environment you have to build a relationship with to survive. This all, twisted with the memory of generations and complex traditional beliefs, brought these people back to their homes. Even despite many of them have families and homes at the Great Land as well, the return started already in 1987 and continued for a couple of years. The lady we are about to meet is 90 now, but back before the disaster she was a dairy worker and up to 2020 she was taking care for her sister, disabled from the childhood. She doesn't have any family, but for many she actually became a family. And here we arrive. <laughs> Apart from bringing so necessary supplies, we decided to make her a bright surprise. Because with us came Alexander Sirota, our and her longtime friend, a world famous former inhabitant of Pripyat. The circumstances didn't allow him to come here for a pretty long time, so here is a long expected meeting. There are some undeclared rules here. One of them is that you never come with empty hands. You should always bring at least a loaf of bread, 
because at the end, affected back in 1933 by the Stalin baked famine, the bread is truly a sacred symbol. And another rule that you never refuse anything you get offered. Therefore, although by the rules it's not allowed, by self settlers everyone takes a meal, often partly made by locally made ingredients cooked in a traditional oven, the same as hundreds years ago. And you also take a shot of local drinks. <laughs> Ну, Багані, я вас хочу попередити, у мене тури до вас заброньовані до 2036 року, так що крутіться, як хочеться. Я? До 2036 року? Дві... Що найменше? До 2036 у мене є замовлення на приїзд до вас. О! Да, так що календарик, давайте, пишемо все. Ти мені кажеш, я зараз, знаєш, з рибами йшла, що кали, кали. А ти кажеш, я йшов до, до Марусі питати, я кажу, та я вже дойду. Я вже матчі не годів дождала, вже матчі не годів, матка моя 88, а Соня 83 умерла. Оце ж вона, оце вона, оце ж вона, у суботу був об'їзд годові. Mm-hmm. Тут вже дівки посходилися, що вже я наготовила, цього м'яса купила, наче, що вона наготовила, вони вже посходили, дякувати їм. І це, прийшли в неділю, і в суботу, і вчора були. Mm-hmm. Приходять, а я це все з корком наріжу, за це в цю грубу, на, на тушу, і воно таке добреньке. Да. It's um, kind of very interesting mix of feelings, because on one side you feel for the people who left here, uh, as they must be alone and must feel lonely. So same time when you are coming, you feel this extreme happiness and uh, how great they are that uh, you came to visit them. Uh, and Baba Hanya, she's like my own grandmother, so it's such a warm feeling like returning to family. To me, it's so hard to do every time when I come here, because we can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Саме головне здоров'я. Саме знаєте, що здоров'я ні за горілку не купиш, ні за чим. Ні за що, а все це таке, як здоров'я, це все багато. Але це реально твоє щастя, якщо ви що баба казала, що ні за що не купиш. Щоб ти дав ті, що ці дві, чи три дав і сказав, що це тебе здоров'я. And remember, uh, please remember me and what I told to you. Because I'm 88 years old and can you imagine what I survived? So just remember what I said. You cannot buy happiness and health for any money. Just basically be, be happy, be healthy, and that's the key. So. Це ваш руководитель? Так. Головна команда ще. Ой, яка я рада, що мені це ж гості. А думаю, ну у новому годі одного. Завтра, завтра, а завтра може щось. Я зараз вважаю до того. Спасибо вам і з Богом. З Богом. Давай, м'який камого. Саме, пішли. І ось хочу дати маленьку. Ось маленьку ки, ось так. Бо я ж вас проведу сюди. Іди, будеш вести нас, Саш. Що, що? Будеш вести? Так, да, будемо вести. Ми ще сходимо на кладовище. Yeah. На кладовище. До Соні, до Соні сходимо. І сходи, сходи, синок мій, сходи. Я завідам сукерочок там. А, у мене є. Є? Yeah? Є. Yeah. Сходи до Соні, покажи, де. Ти знаєш? Я все знаю. Ну, сходи, сходи, дитко моя, бо я не пайду, бо у мене ноги болять. У мене сильно будуть музелі болять, музелі в мене саме. Угу. А допомогла вам та, те, що ми привезли? О, так, да, звісно, звісно. Ну, слава Богу. О, слава Богу. І, і ще а, сирот той, Міша, привозив 
не Коля, сегодня урошу, сегодня урошу. Они сказали, бабушка, Боже, спаси перекисью не переливай валюки. Не, перекисью не правильно. Перекисью, а там такая ена что-то хрящит. Я говорю, я тебе полагаю и хорошо. Ой, Доня, мать, это уже ближе, что они в Одессе. Мы же приезжать не там. Будем вот так. Да ты их позвонишь? Так, так, мы дружим. Да ты моих детей. Все так, что приезжает, это же колонщина, говорит. It's hard to explain exactly what happens when you visit the village of Kupovate and Babahanya especially. Because opposed to uh, visiting uh, the power plant, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and Pripyat and the Duga, which are very cold and industrial, visiting Babahanya is a completely different feeling because immediately you feel the warmth and emotion of a person who cannot be explained unless you meet her in person. It goes straight to your heart and it's an exceptional emotional experience for me to be here and see the less visited part of the zone. Probably now you'll better understand my bitter joke about tourist book at up to 2000 or P6 because objective fact that Han is really old but we really hope she will live very long. Here at this cemetery you can learn a lot about the past of this village. Everywhere in the zone, as far the village is located from the large towns, as more identical will be the surnames on its graves. There could be literally a few families forming a community, and this place is also divided to kind of family districts. Some crosses, of course, no longer have inscriptions, but most of them are not forgotten. There are modern graves as well, because those who were evacuated have a right to be buried back at home, even if they spent all their life at the Great Land. There is one special little grave we always, always attend. This is Hannah's son, Andrew, the only child she had long before the disaster. Unfortunately, he died in the age of two because of the acute disease, and Hannah once told me that he could be actually saved if ambulance from Chernobyl would come on time. Not so far from him is a final rest place for Sofia, the sister Hannah has been taking care for all her life. She lies next to their mother. 30 years ago, this village was pretty a busy place. Hannah's diary farm was converted to a radiobiological center that operated for more than a decade. In Chernobyl, you can see a statue of a bull standing in a Wormwood Star Park. The statue originally was standing in front of the farm of Kupovate. There is also a footage we do not have it, unfortunately, made in the end of 80s, where Soviet reporters asking a group of people of Kopovate who were standing at the local bus stop whether they are not afraid to live at radioactive lands. Hanna also stands there and jokingly says something kind of Hey, no problem, dig a hole right here and bury us if you do not believe in us. We are home and our land, we pass it very much, we live here and we will die here. As for 2020s, the farm is already neglected, a phenomenon of the lost people of Chernobyl is fading, and no one anymore stands at that bus stop. Du coup, bah, bah, Gania, nous, c'est la pour une partie du groupe, c'est la deuxième fois euh, qu'on la rencontre. Euh, la première fois, c'était à trois ans, et c'était déjà euh, pour nous peut-être la dernière fois qu'on la voyait. Et très heureux de vous avoir. Euh, elle est toujours, euh, toujours très en forme finalement et souriante. Euh, C'est une personne très chaleureuse envers euh, les étrangers et, et les gens, même les gens qu'elle ne connaît pas, extrêmement accueillante et, et propose énormément de nourriture et, et de boissons. Euh. Ouais, c'est une leçon de vie à elle seule. C'est vraiment, euh, comment dire, incarnation de, de profiter de la vie. Et même s'il y a des, des interdits ou des choses qui sont censées pas être bonnes, ou, mm -hmm. ou quoi, faut juste, euh, juste en avoir rien à foutre et, et continuer ta vie euh, comme tu l'entends. Baba Gania nous rappelle en fait à chaque fois qu'on va la voir que euh, ouais c'est ça faut rester jeune faut profiter de la vie jusqu'au bout 
Et euh, moi, à chaque fois, j'ai vraiment le cœur au bord des larmes parce que au bord des yeux, je veux dire, parce que bah, je suis pas sûr de la revoir. Je pensais pas la revoir à cette à cette session là et euh, le fait de la revoir bah, et de repartir en me disant bah, est-ce que je la reverrai j'ai envie de la revoir euh, c'est beaucoup de charge émotionnelle mais voilà mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bah, bah, vraiment très contente de la rencontrer tout simplement parce que bah, j'en avais beaucoup entendu parler et euh, c'était vraiment l'idée que je m'en faisais de ce qu'on m'avait raconté euh, très accueillante vraiment plus accueillante qu'une de nos grands-mères en France, hein, n'importe mmh. laquelle. Mmh. Enfin, c'est oui. très très chaleureux, très extrêmement chaleureux en fait. C'est assez impressionnant euh, euh, le mode de vie euh, qu'elle a, qu a et qu'elle fait partager. C'est très rock'n'roll. C'est très ouais. rock'n'roll et euh, en même temps, c'est ah, ça fait très plaisir à voir euh, des personnes comme ça. Nous uh, sommes au Babičky Hani et je dois dire que je me suis fait la sœur protože ač toho má málo, tak nám toho dala hodně a snažila se, aby jsme byli spokojení. A v této době už se tenhle přístup moc nevidí, kdy vlastně ona nám darovala za sebe úplně to nejvíc, co mohla. A v podstatě se na nás tak jako psychicky napojila. A bylo to, bylo to prostě amazing. <laughs> bylo to... Dojemný. <laughs> A připomněla mi vlastně uh, typicky i české babičky uh, a mou babičku tím, uh, tím svým přístupem a takovým tím yes, už jsi zdál, ještě si dej. Uh, bylo to takový, jak kdyby se vrátil do dětství. Uh, uh, a zajímavý, uh, myslím, je to vlastně, jaký život tyto lidi prožili. A i přesto, že prožili hladomor, válku, sovětské časy, tak jsou strašně milí, přátelští a vstřícní a vděční za každý kontakt s lidmi, protože jsou tady docela osamocení v zóně. Já, já nevím, co říct. Baba Haně nám dala víc než vlastně svoji pohostinnost, dala nám vlastně kus svého života, protože nám řekla vlastně uh, čím si prošla. celý svůj život, vyprávěla nám o její synovi, o sestře, vlastně o tom, jak to žili. A ne neměla to nikdy jednoduchý a přesto je prostě plná života a energie, kterou spousta ani mladých lidí dnes nemá. Děkuji za tuhle možnost se s ní setkat, protože je to velmi uh, uh, naplňující. A emotivní. Děkujem. Děkujeme. In the evening, we took our way back to the Dziatki checkpoint. We have been here with hundreds of people, and on the way back, it is always a special feeling shared by everyone. It is a kind of a mix of enlightened joy mixed with a, you know, slight sadness. It's pretty hard to describe. You really need to have to experience it on your own. It's very, very special. What we unfortunately didn't know at the time that it will take half a year before we will be able to come back. The next time we met at the Dityatki checkpoint already in January. It was pretty hard for Hanna to stay alone in the zone during the winter because she is very old already. So she considered to leave the zone and stay in the winter with the family which is caring for her all the time. And even here she told us a lot of really warm and kind words. <laughs> In a month, the war started, and for those who remained in the zone, the life turned it to be a very challenging isolation. We could join forces to help those people, and this is a separate story to be told one day. 
With Hannah, we also were in contact, and later, when the north of Ukraine was deoccupied, she could finally return to her true home. Finally, in July, we could finally come back together with our close friends during one more aid delivery. It's going to go to water, yeah? deliver some humanitarian aid. It's very strong rain out here. And uh, roads, as usual, very bumpy. But hope to approach safely soon. Hit something. That day, by her was a man from one of the zone enterprises, kindly helping her to set up a TV set. <laughs> we brought pretty much food to also to share with other self settlers in the village. Then a few of her neighbors came, so we had a dinner together and so long awaited talk. <laughs> Frankly, we experienced this so many times, but years after, it is still hard to comprehend for us a coexistence of few independent civilizations in this police land. A high-tech nuclear power plant and a shiny white Pripyat, a city of future, and the rural lands with their challenging life and their traditional beliefs, all born together by the nuclear epoch on the island of Chernobyl. This all will explore much deeper in our future videos, so subscribe to our channel, join us on Patreon and see you next time.